Hey, it's Bill Russell. I'm here in my yellow hat. I wore it at Vive and Hims to signify our partnership with Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation and the search for cures and to combat childhood cancer. I'm just blown away by the generosity of our community. With the help of our partners, SureTest, Rackspace, CTG, and some of you giving individually, we were able to raise close to $40,000 at those two events. It is just exceptional. And I would like to thank all of you who have joined us in this cause. If you would like to be a part of it as well, go ahead and hit our page, thisweekhealth.com. You can go to the top blue banner that is on our homepage and click on that to give today. Thank you again for being a part of this effort and this cause. Today in Health IT, ChatGPT now has memory. I thought I'd get back to the news, take a look at what the news has in store for us. This is an interesting story. I think it matters. My name is Bill Russell. I'm a former CIO for a 16 hospital system and creator of This Week Health, a set of channels and events dedicated to transform healthcare one connection at a time. We want to thank our show sponsors who are investing in developing the next generation of health leaders. SureTest, Artisite, Enterprise Health, Parlance, Certify Health, Notable, and ServiceNow. Check them out at thisweekhealth.com slash today. All right. I don't know. Hey, one last thing. Share this podcast with a friend or colleague. Use it as a foundation for daily or weekly discussions on the topics that are relevant to you and the industry. They can subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, don't forget, we're going to be at Vive and Hymns coming up. We're going to be doing Captain's Campaign for Cures. If you see Captain, get your picture taken with him. Every smile in the picture, we give a dollar to fight and find cures for pediatric cancer. So love to have you be a part of that. All right, let's get to the story. The story is pretty interesting in that ChatGPT is now has a digital memory to help personalize its responses. Okay, let me just give you some of it. I'm going to read from an Axios story. OpenAI is adding a feature that will allow ChatGPT to remember both information about individual users and how they want the chatbot to respond to different types of queries. It's important. Why it matters, it's another step in allowing the chatbot to customize itself to the person using it. I don't remember if I talked about this or not, but there was a really interesting talk by Bill Gates after he had seen OpenAI's ChatGPT for the first time. And he talked about this concept of every human is going to have a digital assistant. And the digital assistant is going to know them, understand them, understand their preferences, and be able to respond to those preferences. This is a significant step in that direction. It's going to know my travel habits, my travel patterns. And I'm going to say, go find me a flight from here to LA. And it's going to know what here means. It's going to know what LA means. It's going to know what airline I want to fly. It's going to know what seat I want. Memory matters for this thing to really personalize itself to the person. But not only in that setting, in the setting of how I'm asking for my responses, it will understand that I'm in the digital media business. I do a lot of podcast interviews, that I am writing articles and those kinds of things. And it will know when I'm asking a question or doing research to frame it in a way that allows me to do my job more effectively. So you see that aspect of memory is important. Here's some of the details. The new memory feature is similar to giving custom instructions to ChatGPT and it allows that information to be stored for future queries. The feature is rolling out in a small number of free and paid ChatGPT Plus subscribers. Not really relevant to our community, but it's, it's out there for the broad general use. OpenAI says the memory feature will be made available to business customers once the company is ready to broadly release the feature, how it works. Users can exp explicitly ask ChatGPT to remember something. All right, so I can read it. I can read something into memory. I could read instructions on how to code something very specifically, instructions on how to use Midjourney 5 or something to that effect. And I just read it in once, and then I'm ready to give it instructions. I, I did play around with Midjourney and this a while back, and it's really good at creating prompts. But every time you go to do it, you had to re-educate it on how to use Midjourney and all the prompts and those kinds of things. In this case, you're going to be able to read it in once and then refer back to that memory pattern and then say, now, based on what you know about Midjourney and its prompts, create this. 
People will also be able to opt in or out of the memory feature and choose whether any feedback is used to train OpenAI's models. An incognito-like mode will be available, allowing people to conduct queries without drawing on memories. And a couple things between the lines, this must be an Axios format. Between the lines, OpenAI says it recognizes that the memory feature also raises additional safety and privacy concerns. It says that it has taken steps to assess and mitigate bias and steer ChatGPT away from proactively remembering sensitive information like your health details unless you explicitly ask it to. All right. So I, I think from a personal standpoint, this is a significant step forward in terms of having that personal digital assistant. And I think we're going to see this baked into chips and into the devices that we use. Our phone is going to be much more personal and much more of a digital assistant, regardless of which phone carrier you use. I'm looking to see where Apple starts to come into this game. Majority of people are carrying Apple phones, at least in our industry, and we will see where they go. We've already seen where where Google is going with Gemini and embedding it into the phone and whatnot. And I think that will also continue to become more personal and more of a personal digital assistant. I think your PCs will also see this. And the question becomes, what does this look like in the enterprise? What does this look like in the health system? It's interesting to me that we are paying for AI in a subscription type basis with a lot of these co-pilot models and other things. I think that's an untenable model in terms of the cost to, to the enterprise user and whatnot. I think there has to be less cost models out there. I think the open source move in OpenAI are in, not in OpenAI, the open source move in generative AI. I think it's an important move that's happening. I think the individual chip manufacturers, Intel looking to, to embed AI into the chip, I think that's an important step forward as well. But getting back to this story specifically and its application within healthcare, think of it as understanding which doctor is talking to it, primary care physician versus a oncologist. So it can then be able to understand those kinds of things. And if it does, then the note that it creates could be different. Memory matters. Memory is an interesting concept for these generative AI models. And I think a big step forward. I can only imagine what this does from the processing power or the storage that is required to make this a reality. And I agree that there are some potential safety and privacy concerns to be considered, but the personalization I think is going to trump that. I think people are just going to say, this is really easy to use. And this is starting to understand who I am. It's becoming more of a useful tool because of that. So keep an eye on this one. Talk to your, AI providers, whoever those are at this point, obviously you have the big tech players, the Googles, the Microsofts, you also have Amazon and their investment and whatnot. As you're talking to them, talk to them about this memory idea, explore this memory idea, figure out what it could mean. I think it's going to mean a lot for you personally on your individual devices, but I think there's going to be significant application in the business and clinical setting moving forward. All right. I think that's all for today. Don't forget, share this podcast with a friend or colleague. Use it as foundation for mentoring. We want to thank our channel sponsors who are investing in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. SureTest, Artisite, Enterprise Health, Parlance, Certify Health, Notable, and ServiceNow. Check them out at thisweekhealth.com slash today. Thanks for listening. That's all for now. <laughs>